He had a twin brother all along? That's the big twist we were waiting for? What a ripoff! I predicted that like a year ago. <laughs> What would you say if I told you that this is one of the best crafted scenes of any animated show ever? What would you say if I were to continue that by saying that there are dozens and dozens of moments just like this, all in one show? All in one show that had only two seasons? You might say, well, that's impossible, but here it is. So, hello everyone, my name is Schmenti, and this is my tribute to Gravity Falls. Consider this your spoiler warning for Gravity Falls, if for some reason you haven't watched it yet. There's going to be plenty of spoilers in this, and I wouldn't want to ruin it for you. With that out of the way, Gravity Falls is an animated TV show that aired on Disney Channel and Disney XD between 2012 and 2016. Considering that the show only has 40 episodes, it's amazing that it took four years to air them all. But the product was more than worth the wait. Oh, and my pal Ernie didn't come to my retirement party, and I constructed an 80-ton shame bot that exploded the entire downtown area! <laughs> Gravity Falls is by far the best written show I've ever watched in my life. From the first episode to the last, it's got more attention to detail than a guy inspecting a painting. The show is just a whirlwind of secrets, of foreshadowing, and of enjoyable characters all the way from the pilot to the very last episode. Did it take a couple of episodes to get it rolling like pretty much every other popular show? No. The show made it very clear from the start that this was no regular old Disney show made for kids. The end scene of Tourist Trapped when Stan disappears behind the vending machine meant that we were going to be taken for a ride that was going to last a pretty long time. Let's take a look at other massively popular animated shows. You name it, The Simpsons, Family Guy, Adventure Time, anything of the sort. They rely on one similarity, a floating timeline. If you don't know much about TV show structure, I don't blame you, why would you? Normal people don't. But a floating timeline basically means that a show can go on for a month, a year, a decade, or longer, and the characters never age. Take The Simpsons, for example. The show came out in 1989, and here in 2021, the characters are the same age. There's no progression, they just remain constant. In Gravity Falls, however, the show relies on character progression. Dipper and Mabel, our protagonists, start at 12 years old, and the show ends right after their 13th birthday, making them... Technically a teen. But that's not the only odd thing about how this show was made. It possibly the largest part of it is its continuity. Absolutely everything is connected. A line from episode 3 can become the plot of episode 33. You see, most shows rely on episodes that have no continuity between them. You can watch an episode midway through a season and come out understanding, for the most part, everything, and then skip to the finale and still be fine. But in Gravity Falls, you have to watch it start to finish, or things simply won't make much sense. Sure, you could enjoy the amazing witty humor and the charming animation style, but that would pretty much be the extent of it. If you give it the opportunity to explain itself, however, start to finish, you won't be disappointed. Mystery. It surrounds us all, and the show is a great example of it. Absolutely everything about it was encased in mystery. From the irregular upload schedule to, well, actually the entire plot, the show is pure mystery. But the upload schedule is one of the most fascinating aspects for me. You see, Gravity Falls was not an easy show to make. Each episode took around six months to complete. That would mean two episodes a year. But of course, they could work on multiple episodes at a time. But instead of creating a bunch of episodes and then releasing them weekly, it was actually very sporadic. Months would go by with nothing, not a single word, and then suddenly, eight episodes would air for eight straight weeks. The show first launched on Disney Channel, later moving to Disney XD. But the upload schedule was not the only weird thing about this beautiful show, not in the slightest. A giant part of the mystery was how cryptic some of the plot lines were. There were plenty of moments in the show where the viewer thought something was just pure comedy, just to watch a couple more episodes and find out that it was heartbreaking all along. A great example of this is when Grunkle Stan tries to take the kids fishing in episode 2, Legend of the Gobblewalker. At the time, Stan seems like he's just a nuisance. The kids gladly shrug off, 
in pursuit of fortune and adventure. But then the viewer gets deep into season two, to the episode Tale of Two Stands, and this episode becomes a whole lot clearer. No, Stan never really cared about fishing. He was trying to relive the promise him and his twin brother made as kids, to sail around the world, together. A comedic plot at first given a complete 180 and turned downright depressing later on in the show. That's what it comes down to. That's why I absolutely adore this show so much. You just can't get that in other mediums of TV. This plot is living, it's breathing, it encases the characters and shrouds each part of the show in mystery, misdirecting the viewer into feeling different emotions about different episodes, just to flip them on their heads later. But the mystery of Gravity Falls runs a whole lot deeper than that. Grunkle Stan, are you wearing a blindfold? <laughs> nah, but with these cataracts, I might as well be. What is that, a woodpecker? Do you remember Mad Libs? Well, I was addicted to them as a kid. I read a ton of books, and I always wanted to write my own. But then I found out about Mad Libs. It was a way for me to write stories, just a lot easier. Recently, I asked myself why I love them so much. Why is it that I prefer playing games to watching shows? Why do I like doing puzzles more than drawing a picture? Well, I think the answer is engagement. When I find myself engaged in something, it's like an instinct kicks in that I have to learn everything about this thing, whatever it may be. And TV shows are no exception. Sure, I love to be lulled into a comedy like The Office or Parks and Rec, but I always find myself falling deeper in love with shows that make me question things. Is the main character going to live five episodes from now? What could the outcome be? And no show does it better than Gravity Falls. Everything about this show was made to be engaging. Don't believe me? Listen to this. Now listen to it, but... On the rewind! This clue, three letters back, is a cipher. No, not the evil Bill kind, but the Caesar kind. Each episode had a cipher in the end scene, and when the viewer deciphered it, it would give an ambiguous clue to a plotline. Already an amazing addition to the show, they could have stopped there, but when you're Alex Hirsch, you don't do that. No, they switched the cipher up, from the legendary Atbash cipher to more cryptic ones like the key... the, the, the key... Step up our game with the Visionaire Cipher. The key Visionaire Cipher that was found starting in Season 2. I won't reveal some of the other ones in case you want to rewatch each intro, but finding these was purely fascinating. But intros aren't the only thing Gravity Falls did to introduce a puzzle into each episode. It goes a whole lot deeper than that. From Alex himself showing up behind the witch's hand in the intro to an entire real life treasure hunt. More on that later. The creators of this show knew one thing all too well. It wasn't enough to just tantalize the audience with an amazing show. They had to be in there. They had to be deep within a sleepy town in Oregon on that fateful summer. They had to pull at the viewer's heartstrings and then flip reality itself on its head. And that's exactly what they did. Gravity Falls has a plot that was incredibly difficult to make, according to the creators. Most shows make episodes by making a plot and then making dialogue, but Gravity Falls isn't most shows. It was different. Instead of the simple two-part episodes, the average episode of Gravity Falls would begin as a simple idea, then move to fleshing out the dramatic structure, then move to adding in a character-driven subplot and give a main focus to the one thing people should care about, the characters. The hardest part of creation, according to Hirsch himself, was to find a character story that actually uncovers, explores, or pushes tension on something our characters care about that is properly explored via magic or monster or impossibility of the week. Then it goes through another writing process, but one thing is for certain. There's absolutely no filler. You can never find a part in Gravity Falls that was put there for no reason. There's no moment where the audience is meant to just shut up and sit there. Everything is placed for a reason. Gravity Falls is a show that doesn't just trick the audience into giving the creators ad revenue. It's a show that makes you ponder. It makes you say, what more is there? It's a show that kept me entertained long after those 22 minutes of an episode. 
one that kept me hooked for a decade. I ate a man alive tonight. Let's take a look at one of cinema's most beloved styles, the plot twist. You see, the plot twist is easy to pull off, but it's hard to pull off well. It requires great writing, insane attention to detail, but most importantly, it requires catching the audience off guard. It means that you must force the audience to believe in something, to grow an emotional connection to it, just to flip it around their heads and make them fall backwards in confusion when you completely change it. And there is no better show than Gravity Falls for this. Let's take a look at another great scene from the early episodes of Gravity Falls, from the episode Head Hunters. Here, Grunkle Stan is mourning the loss of a wax replica of himself, and as a kid, I always thought that that was just the writers making him narcissistic and self-consumed. And then I finished the show, and re-watching that episode just feels sad. Shout out to the channel Nerdstalgic for pointing this out, they have a great video about Gravity Falls and the link's in the description. You see, Stan isn't mourning this simple wax version of himself because he's so in love with himself, He's mourning it because it reminds him of his twin brother, Four. His twin that we as the audience don't even know exists until three-fourths into the show. His twin that he was working for three decades to bring back into his life. Once you can comprehend that, this seemingly comedic scene completely switches directions and makes you question what else the writers convinced you was drama instead of comedy. This ridiculous episode, this hilarious couple of minutes of wax decapitation, of sibling bonding, of Sherlock Holmes, becomes a way for Stan to get closure that his brother isn't coming back until he does. But Schmenti, I hear you say, this show is rated Y7. How can kids possibly pick up on this? Well, they weren't necessarily meant to. Gravity Falls is rated as suitable for young children, and that's what I was when I first watched it. I specifically remember being right around Dipper's age and feeling that I was right there as a prepubescent teen, a 12-year-old with no idea about the adult world but wanting to learn everything. It took me about five to six complete rewatchings of the show to really deep dive into the nuance and adult themes some of the episodes take the audience on. Sure, Bill Cipher can't really Children I need to make into corpses! On a children's TV show, but that doesn't mean that deceit, lies, heartbreak, death, pug trafficking, and other adult themes aren't centerfold on the show. Alex Hirsch created this show for himself, not for kids. In the same way that the creators of Phineas and Ferb created the show for the parents, but allowed children to love it as well, Gravity Falls was a show Hirsch found entertaining himself. He wasn't dumbing down the humor or the plot so that the average 12-year-old Timmy could enjoy it, but they did anyways. Hirsch reflected on his own childhood in the creation of the show, from living in Piedmont, I think, to trick-or-treating with his own twin sister. Plenty of ideas for the show came from his own memory. There's a great quote on this article by Film School Rejects. The article's in the description below. It says, Early Gravity Falls is brilliant and funny and everything you could ever want out of a paranormal cartoon, but it's very much about and for kids. Not that there's anything wrong with that. In fact, it's perfect. By introducing us to the world through the eyes of two young outsiders, the show is able to naturally withhold a huge amount of information with a deniability that comes completely naturally. It can disguise its tragedy very easily, and that's its greatest success. Let's take a look at the clip I showed in the intro again. You had a twin brother all along? That's the big twist we were waiting for! What a ripoff! I predicted that like a year ago. At the surface, this seems like banter about a show on a show, but then you realize it's actually a joke intended to make fun of itself. I won't go into more detail in case you don't understand it, but when I finally figured that out, I was amazed at just how much this was repeated, how many times the creators put in way more effort than they had to, just to drop little easter eggs and secrets. When I was a kid, I fell in love with animated movies and shows because of the cartoon animation. But I think a lot of people never really got past the look at them to think, what would happen if I portrayed a message through this? I'm not saying that everyone thinks that live action shows and movies are better at being serious than cartoons, but a lot do. And to be honest, I see where they're coming from. 
If you were a kid when The Simpsons came out, or any of those shows for that matter, then you probably remember a couple things about them. They were made to trap you into watching them over and over again, over dozens of seasons. They never really explored adult topics all that well to kids. Sure, you have slapstick adult humor in things like Family Guy, but does it actually mean anything at the end of the day? My point in all of this is that animation is not just a children's medium for watching mindless TV anymore. It's an art form that allows creators to not only explore any theme they want, but do it in any way they want. It's a way for those dreamers to not give up on their wild childhood fantasies, but instead capitalize on them and make shows that get people thinking. Gravity Falls is such a good example of this, but there are many shows like this that are becoming more prevalent. All I ask is that you give them a chance, and then tell me how their finales are. Gravity Falls hooks you into it like no other show I've watched. I can be in a car or on my bed, but when I hear that fabled opening, I'm not in my house. I'm in a little town in Oregon. Everything is connected, intertwined between itself. Those woodpeckers you always see in the exterior shots of the shack? Well, as it turns out, you can marry them. That time traveler, Blendon Blandon? Well, he's in the show a whole lot earlier than you probably remember, showing up in some of the earliest episodes. That's what I mean when I say well-written. You can't understand this show on one viewing. It requires multiple to just be comprehended. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, so it just tricks you into watching it. But trust me, give it a chance and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Four years. That's how long it took for this show to begin and finish. That's how long it took for an animated masterpiece to be opened and shut. Within four years, you might think that that's enough for plenty of episodes, but I already told you, there were only 40. This is perhaps the biggest piece of the puzzle, the reason that this outrageously well-written show worked so incredibly well. As a kid, I hated the creators for it. All I wanted to do was see more of the characters that we fell in love with. I had grown a bond to them, and when I couldn't see them anymore, I searched for answers. But as I matured, I realized this show was never made to be long, it was made to be good. Even the best shows of our day struggle with maintaining a fresh personality over long periods of time, and even those that do that well get a little bit of hate for it. The Office, for instance, is critically acclaimed and I personally adore the show, but after Michael Scott leaves, there's a lot to be desired in the following seasons. And that's something you never had with Gravity Falls. Short, concise, but makes you feel the same way as if you had just binged 12 seasons of a show. I cannot tell you the names of most episodes from other shows, but with Gravity Falls, I know each one by name. You can't even rank the episodes because there's no filler, nothing out of place, nothing put there just to simply tantalize the audience into giving them their attention. I've never been to the Pacifica Northwest, sorry, I mean the Pacific Northwest. I have never walked deep into those moss-covered woods and breathed that air. So why then do I have such an emotional connection with it? It's all about this show. If a genie had come up to 13-year-old me, chances are I would have said I wanted Gravity Falls to be real. And also, you know, something typical like infinite money or power. There was something so wholesome about it. Sure, it's a show about ghouls and goblins, about magic and mystery, but it's also a show about family. The same family that may kick you out of the house just for you to meet up with your brother decades later. The same family that breaks the only rule of Gravity Falls, trust no one. The same family that binds this town into a community that every viewer wanted to be a part of. Gravity Falls broke every norm about TV shows at the time, let alone animated TV shows. It was one of the first shows, plus one of the first animated shows, plus one that was shown to children to have a gay couple not only be in the show, but beloved by all that watch. You can't honestly tell me that Officer Blubbs and Deputy Darling were fascinating parts of the plot, giving everyone much needed comedic relief and heavy situations sometimes. It also fleshed out absolutely everybody's story. In a lot of shows, I can't tell you the backstory of the fourth or fifth most important character, let alone background characters. But in Gravity Falls, everyone has a story. Lazy Susan's blue eye? Yep. That old crazy hobo living at the dump? Oh yeah, strap in for his. Even background characters like Toby Determined, also read that name a couple of times slow if you don't get it, have backstory that is explored in subplots mid-episode. Everyone is important in the show, from all the members of the society to the blind eye, to the average guy walking down the street. 
Things are put there for a reason. Speaking of breaking norms, let's take a look at a certain dynamic that shows half, the family dynamic. There are plenty of shows with siblings being at the forefront, but a lot of them have one thing in common. For some reason or another, they make the siblings hate each other for tension and drama. Gravity Falls, though, that's not the case. No matter what Dippler and Mabel do, no matter how much they fight, it's all wrapped up within those 22 minutes of pure bliss that is an episode. My favorite example of this is right before the greatest television finale of all time, but more on that later. Mabel downright causes the apocalypse after fighting with Dipper, but you've never even seen Dipper blame her. Not once. Instead, the second he sees that the sky opens up, he's worried for her. It didn't matter that she had just done something unthinkable. He downright cares for her. This is what true love means when you have a sibling, because when push comes to shove, they care about each other way more than any fight. This relationship is a foil for the relationship between Stan and Ford, who used to be best friends like Dipper and Mabel, but then they had a falling out that never really healed. Stan is also an amazing representation of the fun uncle. He lets the kids do what they want, but would literally fight a dinosaur for them, just to make one of them happy. He cares about them more than most things, and I think that that's a big thing people get wrong about him. Family is most important to him, but again, more on that later. Remember when I said that there was a real-life treasure hunt? I wasn't lying. After the show's finale, Alex Hirsch posted this image onto Twitter. When deciphered, it reads, hashtag cipher hunt. Then, the madman actually made the hunt. All across the globe, fans were able to be a part of the greatest mystery of television history. I mean, come on, what could possibly be a cooler way to end a show than this? Voice actors don't get a lot of love in our society. Shows might, and the characters on them might, but the actors typically don't. Not the case with Gravity Falls, though. Kristen Schaal, who voices Mabel, and Jason Ritter, who voices Dipper, put so much heart, so much love into the voice acting that I just have to pay tribute to them. And let's not forget the man who made this show. Hirsch actually voices, oh yeah, like everyone else. From Grunkle Stan to Seuss to Old Man McGucket, Hirsch did everything to make sure this show was perfect. And it was. But it's not just real life where the characters are great. This show has a perfect cast. Each character is fleshed out perfectly, with personalities, weaknesses, strengths, passions, and it works so incredibly well. Stan is my favorite example of this. The amount of undercover character development is fascinating to watch. The audience thought of him as a self-loving, narcissistic freak in the first season, but if I had to say something about him, I would say that he's actually a smarter character than Ford. Ford is naturally gifted, and used his strengths to propel him forward, while Stan was broke and homeless. But Ford gets tricked by a creature Stan would have instantly seen as a con man, and is too prideful to ruin his research when he finds out his true intentions. Stan, after Ford di disappears, is so passionate about getting his brother back that he becomes a businessman, keeps his brother's house, fakes his own death, and teaches himself advanced mathematics and interdimensional travel for one reason to get his brother back. He takes decades of selfless work just to undo one mistake. People might see him as selfish, but I think he's one of the best characters. But talking about characters brings me to my favorite one. Every great protagonist needs a great antagonist. From Batman and the Joker to Luke and Darth Vader, stories can't just have one be great, they both need to be. And for a show like Gravity Falls, it's difficult to match people like Dipper and Mabel. But oh boy, did they. There are four main antagonists throughout the show. Robbie, Pacifica, Lil Gideon, and the main one, Bill Cipher. The first season goes through the first three antagonists as Dipper's nemesis, Mabel's nemesis, and their combined nemesis. And all three are amazing characters that perfectly foil their counterparts. But nothing matches Bill. Bill Cipher is, in my opinion, the greatest character ever to touch the screen. Nothing can prepare you for him. Nothing about him makes sense. Well, trying to figure out if people thought the same, I came across this Reddit post from five years ago, and it sums it up perfectly. Bill is the most amazing villain ever. At the surface, he's silly and non-intimidating, but then you realize that Bill is a psychotic sadist that will make you suffer horribly once it's too late. 
He turns his limits into advantages and only loses when he forgets about minor details. Bill always has a trick up his sleeve and never reveals anything or hints anything about what he's doing. He's incredibly smart with his plans. I mentioned a little while ago that Bill takes advantage of the thing that makes us human, emotion. He uses it to tempt, trick, and destroy his victims. And to top it all off, Bill is funny. What could be better? Bill represents the downfall of humanity, our emotions. He represents the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of perfection. There are hundreds of videos about him and theories about him that are being made to this day, five years after the show ended. But it's not enough to have great characters. They must have great conflict. Weird Mageddon. The best ending to a show in history. This four-part finale to a show is a downright movie. If I had only one hour to watch something for the rest of my life, it would be this. It's the perfect ending to the perfect show. It wraps up all loose ends, all plot holes, all inconsistencies, and brings me to more emotion than any other show's ending. If you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're watching this. Go watch it right now. Those last 20 minutes of television that finish this show are perfect. From the moment Stan and Ford work together, another example of Stan sacrificing for his family, I knew I was in for a treat. And then you have the end for each character. Wendy completes her story, Seuss completes his. It's not just Dipper and Mabel, the main characters, it's everyone. I cannot say enough great things about this ending. It's just a masterpiece that deserves your attention. I adore this show. From the writing, to the characters, to the plot, to everything. Watching it brings me back to being a kid, fascinated with mystery and monsters, just trying to get into my teenage years. It brings me back to long Sunday afternoons with my sister, watching those perfect 22 minutes and then researching the codes and theories until the next episode. It brings me back to a time that defined who I am today. And for that, all I can really say is thank you. Thank you, Alex Hirsch, for putting your mental health, your body, your soul into this show. But it would be disingenuous for me to end the video with any other way than Dipper's own words. Thank you all so much for watching. I know this was a lot to take in and a lot longer than my regular videos, but I had to make sure this was done correctly. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. It helps me out a ton and it's free. Again, this has been Schmenti, and I'll see you next summer.